I'll give you a quick insight into uh, how objective assessment, mainly played through an online environment, can help with all three of the, the pieces that Alan's referred to there, cost, time, and quality. Because they're not mutually exclusive things. They are things that there's certain trade-offs, but you should be able to deliver on most of them with a bit of smart thinking, a lean process, and a good way of managing risk uh, on a cost, time, and quality perspective. OK, you all employ these people. Anyone seen The Hurt Locker? Very good movie. I'm just going to show you five minutes of that and then lunch. <laughs> okay, so we know that some jobs are incredibly tricky, incredibly risky. Uh, they're incredibly specialized. There's not many people want to do them. Not many people can do them. You're in the business of talent, sourcing, acquisition, hiring, making decisions, and trying to get good people in your company. The interesting thing about a job like this, though, even though it appears weird and complicated, there's so many rules and procedures and methodologies and technologies and governance around this role that while it appears to be highly dangerous, a lot of people could probably do this if you train them. And while lots of things do go wrong within a war zone, you do have an awful lot of protection and thinking goes in into the way this job is regulated. So on a macro level, an organization can control the quality of what this person does to a large degree by the infrastructure around the person. This poor man, Nick Leeson, if he'd only done what he did 20 years later, he'd probably be a media star. He wouldn't have got put in jail. <laughs> I think he was a man of his time, but he's the poster child for, can I even remember him? He's like an old guy now. He's actually the manager of our local soccer team in Galway. He's a football manager. <laughs> um, and he's married to our local hairdresser. That's something you didn't know. <laughs> uh, he's the poster child for banking problems and fraudulent trading, Nick Leeson. Anyone familiar with this person? I've no book, but you can just take the honor of being right. Who is this person? Yeah, from Santiago de Campostello, the man who crashed the train. People can't really explain why he did that. Been driving the train very well for 20 years, and then that happened. Uh, nobody knows this man. My dad, terrible man at jobs, dangerous, chainsaw ropes, never let him near your house. Anybody know this? This is recent. This man really needed a bit of intelligence testing as well as pilot training. He's the man who flew the plane to Switzerland and sought asylum when he was supposed to land in Rome. And then got, he's probably going to get 20 years in jail. But like, why did he do that? So the further you get away from that hurt locker type job, where everything is controlled centrally, and the more within which people have freedom and autonomy within which to display their true values, behaviors, attributes, attitudes, and their intent, it kind of becomes impossible for organizations to control really the quality of what they will do. You can make as many rules as you like, but it becomes difficult once you hire the person. When you're screening them or selecting them or promoting them, you actually have a lot of control over how you will decide what you do. So whether you're doing things fast or in a very, very thoughtful, slow way, you still have the opportunity to prevent these types of things from, from happening. You can manage risk very well. Has anyone seen this slide before? It's obvious what this is about. It's a study from Princeton University in the US. There is a bad man on your left. He's very bad. He would kill you dead in the street at nighttime. He's a lovely man. Apart from he looks like the little Britain guy, but leave that to one side, <laughs> who is sometimes, I imagine, not a good man. But in stereotype version, the man on right is good man, and the man on left is bad man. Uh, Princeton University has done a huge longitudinal study about uh, people convicted of different criminal offenses uh, and what they look like. And there's loads of um, the uh, uh, Kirsty from, uh, uh, from Launchpad, the video company, was talking about people looking at faces and making decisions. And so people are very visually driven. That's why they like those video technologies. But people make terrible decisions by looking at people. Um, I think the latest kind of stats are that people tend to make decisions about people not in the first 30 seconds at interview, but in the first seven seconds. Like, you must be so smart as recruiters and talent acquisition people that you can work it all out. Yep, looked at his face, saw his shoes, looks a bit like this guy, get out. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have, obviously, the lovely Dr. Jekyll, played by Johnny Depp. And then we have Mr. Hyde. The person who looks fantastic, starts great, 
they get past probation or they lose interest and they turn into Dr. Hyde. Or you make them a boss and they turn into Dr. Hyde. You know? The way that we try and work out a model that is able to enable you as an organization to deliver talent efficiently as a talent acquisition person and to then have it operationalized effectively from a talent management and deployment point of view is to look at how you can hire more people who have this good performance on the vertical and then stay a reasonable length of time. So it's not rocket science at all. You're just trying to maximize this, this green domain. And the more people for the longer amount of time in that green domain you have at a reasonable price of acquiring and employing them, the better an organization you will have. So the stories you've all heard this morning about experts in their field about attraction and acquisition and branding, of which I'm not the world's greatest expert on. I'm more of an expert around uh, eating, probably. But <laughs> more to do with assessment and making decisions about the quality of hire, I think none of you would dispute that if you could efficiently work out how to make a big green area, everybody would thank you in your organization. Um, the, the way that we typically do this is that we have 250 people in our company, about 100 psychologists. We assess about 12 million people per year in 40 languages. But we use all mainly psychometric type things with aptitude, personality, motivation. We use skills testing, which is more stuff you learned. And we use also video technology. Like uh, We work a lot with actually with Launchpad, and we have our own technology that's video as well. Uh, and we measure people against all objective set of criterions. In high volume for screening, it's big, big groups of people with the best people being accurately identified and risk taken out. And at point of hire, or for more scarce talents, it's about getting intelligent information to help you manage risk when you're investigating the candidate at point of decision making. The way this typically works is that we do offline things as well, like assessment centers, development centers, interviews. But most of our organizational clients, they have kind of an assessment hub through us. And they're able to use different mechanisms, like Lego bricks. And they can configure them against any model they want in order to measure whatever is likely to be valid in measuring what they need for an efficient process or a productive hire. That's just our propaganda slide. <laughs> but typically, um, what you have here is that the last speaker from Glassdoor had mentioned, you know, you're meant to be talking about something to do with ROI and return on investment. So for example, Dell are going through a huge transformation globally where they are hiring huge amounts of early stage talent into sales and technical roles as their business moves from a product to a more servitized business. Um, they've taken these types of tools that are behavioral and value. And what they've done is they've been able to configure them in a way where they run the interview process and an online assessment process to identify areas of risk. The interview against that, and if you don't meet the right criteria on that or they can't find evidence, they're not allowed to hire that person, even if they've got excellent functional skills. That's helped them to start delivering 36% more revenue of new salespeople they've taken in over a year. It's a very clear quality of hire metric if you look at Alan's pop quiz. If you look at something here like uh, EasyJet, which is our little case study we'll give you two or three minutes on, they obviously care about the quality of hire. So we've had them be able to promote 30% more people from cabin crew to cabin manager. And in an industry like airline, there's a lot of churn just by the nature of it. its young mobile people working in an early stage career in the cabin. But it saves them a fortune and also gets them better people if they can promote more from the people who were the frontline crew to be the cabin managers. And also by smart use of their teleo system, combined with our situational judgment and verbal assessments, they've been able to take out 40% of the people they need to interview in order to hire the right number of staff at the right quality and be able to get 30% more of them promoted into being cabin managers. That in each cycle they hire, they have a big hiring cycle every spring, that takes out 6,000 hours of, of interviewing. And that's the interviewing alone. That's not the logistics of organizing it or screening. So just to give you, how many minutes, Alan? Five, two? two five. I can see mouths open, people are gnawing their hands off, and people <laughs> pretending they're using their phone to go out. Um, so you, I won't, you, don't need, you can imagine what they're doing is they have a big pile of people they need to hire for pilots, cabin crew, graduates, and technical jobs. They want to use the Taleo thing properly. They've got a great brand. They want to tell a great story. And they want to hire people at a low cost in a good way, treat people right, and make good hiring decisions. 
We've helped them with realistic job preview technology, situational judgment questionnaire, ability assessments, and then custom reports from personality tools that they use in this. I'll give you a little flavor of what they've done. It's more pictorial than, than, than written. So you can, we have a public case of this that's quite long. It's a great journey they've taken with uh, Ruth Spaulding and Laura Cooper in EasyJet over three years. So they've gone from really having not very formalized, well-organized systems in build, into building a brilliant careers portal that has won uh, all OnRec awards and things like that, and brilliant use of a Teleo enterprise system and great use of all types of diagnostic tools online. They've been done a superstar job. They're just busy doing a real job today. They run an airline. I go around the place talking about stuff. So they couldn't come today. So they have huge growth, loads of passengers. They measure everything. So they, they return on investment is very normal for an airline like EasyJet to look at. It's growth of passengers, profit before tax, profit per seat. Um, uh, they're on time. I've never, we work with about 20 airlines, and every airline we work with always has themselves as the most likely to be on time. I assume this is the truth, but um, it's up to yourself. I'm sure you've been on EasyJet, and you can make up your own mind. Um, then they're proud of having satisfied customers and being better than their direct competition. So they measure and measure and measure. So the culture of measurement in their com company is very strongly ingrained about profit and satisfaction in customers. And the great job that Ruth and Laura in their talent division have done is they've taken the same discipline to the dealings with people, both in sourcing, screening, and selecting and promoting. So the best way to show you is maybe give you one example, one stream of people. They have loads of streams, but the cabin crew is kind of a simple one to explain what they do. Everybody has to go to the careers portal if they want to apply. It's fantastic looking. It's really, really well uh, designed. A company called Basis Media in Yorkshire, where all good things from the web come from, like Plusnet. <laughs> they, uh, they, they built it. They're a, they're a specialized company in that. They've done a very good job on that. They, they've built a website that explains the jobs. We've built with them a, a realistic job preview that then is called Try Before You Fly. So it's partially gamification and partially like a little interactive feedback domain. So people go in and they get little questions. Uh, you know, your birthday, friend's birthday's on, you're stuck in Hamburg, you won't be able to get home. How do you feel about that? So they click on something and it gives them live feedback. And you can do this with video or you can do it with text. The technology is easy to deliver in a, in a video way or a text way, in the way things have developed. The tech has got a lot simpler and less expensive. And what it does is it tells you how you're getting on in terms of your fit with the job. Everyone this morning is talking about values and behavior. And we know from our psychology background that they're the things that have a long shelf life within the person over time. Functional skills change fast. Behavior and values tend to be more ingrained and static and better in predicting. So they get nice feedback as they're going along. And then they can get an option to apply or not apply. The interesting thing from this is that 27,000 people a month use this, but only 8,000 people apply. Now, when you see the yields they're getting from their systems, what they're getting is much better, more committed, more aligned people are applying. And they still have plenty of people to choose from. And people tend to send this link around to their friends. And it's very suited to blogs or social media and distribution, because it's a friendly, nice thing to interact with. Then they apply in their Teleo. I think you're all familiar with applicant tracking systems. They do a short application. And then they get sent to one of our systems, where they get these little situational judgment things to go through, where you have multiple types of responses. And this is calibrated and validated against the cabin crew who have performed well over a number of years and are most likely to stay or get promoted or work well. If they complete this little assessment, which gives them another picture of the job as well, it starts to tell them a bit about what you'd be doing. And then that's rated. They have a little bit about understanding instructions. And then the information goes back into the Talio system. And they just have, it has a bit of mathematics go on in order to make a fit score. And then you can see everybody together, all 8,000 of them every month, have a little number attached to them about are they fitting good or not so good. And that means they can really, really quickly know who to prioritize to take to interview. This will be my final slide for this. There's plenty more to this case study. But really, I think what you need to see is that they have gone from getting a 41% conversion rate in 2010-11, when they had kind of things on paper at a center and and a kind of an interview process, and they had an applicant tracking system that, that was OK, but it wasn't as good as their Teleo assessment, Teleo applicant system, and they had no online diagnostics. When they introduced that little verbal and situational judgment thing, they got the conversion to 48% in the first year, based on a little bit of validation. 
Last year, they've got it to 55%. So their yield is up around 40% from their base starting. They also, if you combine this with a 30% better promotion rate to cabin manager, they have multiple different domains of where they've achieved a time efficiency, they can run it faster. They've got a cost efficiency, they can run it cheaper. And they've got a productivity gain, which it's all those three things that Alan had you doing your pop quiz about. Alone, just with the cost of the people they had to meet at each cycle of centres, they're taking out around £108,000. That's just from one part of the time for the interviewers to do the interviews with the cabin crew. <clears throat> and that doesn't cover anything like travel time, sent the cost of the facilities. And they've done the same with graduates, with pilots, with engineers. They've taken out a huge amount of cost, and they're delivering better quality. Um, there's loads more to this. Anyone can have it as a public case study. We might give it to the SR Tech Group to distribute if you, if you want. So happy lunch. Uh, sorry for starving you to death. Go forth and eat each other. <laughs>